Renewable hydrogen is a topic I feel personally very passionate about. And that's for two reasons. Because it's directly and strongly connected to our vision of creating a world that runs entirely on green energy. Which does not mean that renewable hydrogen is the silver bullet when it comes to the global decarbonization. But it will no doubt play a significant role when it comes to decarbonize the hard to abate sectors, which will otherwise not achieve their net zero. Secondly, renewable hydrogen reminds me a lot where offshore wind was 12, 15 years ago. At that time, there was a clear proof of technical concept. However, only a few projects had been built and those were heavily relying on strong subsidy and government support. It was also unclear how fast and quickly the technology can scale, how quickly costs could come down. And also the entire regulatory framework was rather uncertain. But remember, that was the time when we at Ørsted made very bold moves in order to kickstart offshore wind as a new industry. What is very different to offshore wind in the old days is the global appetite for green hydrogen which is already sort of significant and has exponentially increased over the last 18 months, with current forecasts expecting somewhere between 80 to 100 gigawatt of renewable electrolyzer capacity being installed by 2030. Our ambition at Ørsted is threefold. We want to continue our efforts, and with continue I mean we have been engaging within the hydrogen space already for the last three years to become a global leader in renewable hydrogen and green fuels. We want to execute and expand our current pipeline, which is well above three gigawatt already, in close collaboration with our key offtake partners. And we want to pursue global opportunities across all our growth platforms in the EU, in the UK, in the US and in Asia Pacific. Ørsted is very well positioned and we have a very strong starting point. We also see uh, renewable hydrogen as a natural extension of our business model because we have a proven track record of scaling new renewable technologies. We have vast experience working together with policymakers in shaping the regulatory frameworks. We see uh, significant synergies between renewable hydrogen and our large scale fleet of renewable assets, especially in the interface between the wind farms, for instance, or the dispatch of the electrolyzer. And our assets are strategically located very close to industrial offtake centers. And then I talked as part of my offshore wind presentation already about our proven and flexible partnership approach, which is especially important here because in order to kickstart renewable hydrogen, we need to bring the supply and the demand side working hand in hand together. Our approach to renewable hydrogen is to focus on specific offtake sectors. Those are refineries and ammonia, because uh, there we see a very, in the very short term, a high demand to substitute fossil hydrogen with renewable hydrogen. Then uh, we will focus on steel because uh, we are obviously a, a large steel off-taker ourselves, going into our foundation structures or also into the turbine towers. And we will focus on heavy transport, which includes heavy road transport, shipping and aviation. Our engagement approach is a very structured approach. We establish and mature concrete projects and we like to go for projects which are not just small scale one-offs, but actually projects uh, which are strategic, which can be scaled and which become gigawatt sizes in scale. We have an approach uh, where we work in phases. We obviously want to build something and realize something quickly in order to replicate the learnings to apply once we go and scale up the technology. We are in close dialogue with regulators shaping the framework and each, for each of our projects, uh, we have a dedicated and specific funding plan because uh, there is a significant cost gap today between fossil hydrogen and renewable hydrogen. We also work closely uh, with uh, the OEMs across the different electrolyzer technologies. 
And then uh, let me just spend a minute in uh, zooming in of where exactly is it we play in the value chain. Our idea is uh, we are replicating our approach from offshore wind, which means uh, we want to develop, build, operate and own electrolyzers. We have no plans or intention to invest into a specific electrolyzer technology. However, as an offshore, we will work very closely in a partnership approach with the electrolyzer OEMs in order to improve the technology, scale the technology and make the right choices for each of the specific projects we have. We will uh, lean forward in selective parts of the renewable hydrogen offtake side, especially within green fuels. So e-ammonia or e-methanol are two examples to mention here. We have no uh, plans uh, to go into the distribution of renewable hydrogen or green fuels, because uh, this is where we rely on our partners uh, and on our strong offtake partners uh, to take care of that. This is a snapshot uh, of our impressive uh, development pipeline that we are already having far more than 3000 megawatt of projects. And you can see uh, these projects are across our different core markets in Europe. They are across the different offtake sectors I just explained. And most importantly, they are in partnership with absolute industry leaders in their respective sectors. It is gigawatt scale projects we have in the development, but I'm also very proud and happy to tell you that we are not just developing, we are actually already constructing. And that is the H2 res project uh, that you can see here on the slide, where we broke ground uh, just three weeks ago here in Copenhagen. It's a two megawatt electrolyzer that will be constructed uh, by the end of the year, fully commissioned in the start of 2022, delivering renewable hydrogen to fuel zero emission taxis and buses driving in the Copenhagen area. It's also our very first stepping stone for the Green Fuel for Denmark project. That is a project uh, where we work together with Danish blue chips like Maersk, SAS, Copenhagen Airport, DFDS and DSV to realize a 1,300 megawatt electrolyzer vision by 2030. The project is dependent upon the realization of the Bornholm Energy Island, which uh, is expected uh, around 2030. And uh, obviously we need uh, a lot of green electrons to fuel that project. But back to the point of that we like to face things, we have tangible, much earlier short to midterm phases for this project. Phase one is a 10 megawatt electrolyzer to be established in 2023. Phase two is a 250 megawatt electrolyzer to be established in 2027. As I mentioned, uh, Renewable hydrogen relies on significant funding and government support because we have today a significant cost gap between fossil and renewable hydrogen. There are different funding pathways that are available for us. There are national funding pools, which we have already utilized, for instance, for the H2 Res project in Denmark, but also for the Westküste 100 project in Germany. Then there are EU funding pools we are active, uh, for instance, in the first EU innovation round with uh, the Lingen project, where we together with PB BP are in the process uh, of uh, applying for funds, realizing the first phase of this project. And then uh, there is a pan-European EU funding scheme called IPSI, important projects of common European interest. I'm very happy to tell you that uh, four of our projects here on the slide are actually in that, uh, in that, in that round. It is uh, the Green Fuel for Denmark project, which had, has been uh, selected by the Danish government, now going into what is called an EU matchmaking process. Then uh, we got great news uh, end of last week that both the West Crystal 100 project, but also the Lingen refinery project have been selected by the German government in a very rigid selection process to go into the EU matchmaking. And then we're also applying uh, uh, together with our partner Yara for the Slojski project into the IPSI process. The important uh, thing to understand is uh, that uh, once being successful in the IPSI process, it not only opens up for more European funding, 
but it allows for additional and significant step up in national funding, which why the IPSI process is something we are very focused on. Last, uh, let me say, uh, this is just a snapshot. We're obviously working on many more opportunities and we're also expanding our opportunity pool into other areas outside Europe. One example I want to give is the MOU we established last week in Korea with an industrial Korean blue chip POSCO, where we foresee uh, to collaborate across offshore wind, but also renewable hydrogen. And Korea is a super exciting market when it comes to renewable hydrogen, because uh, the country has a strategy to put uh, 6 million fuel cell cars on the road, but also to establish 15 gigawatt of fuel cells for power generation. Allow me to uh, double click uh, on one of the projects uh, I just showed you, namely the West Coast 100 project. This is a project uh, where we work uh, with 10 partners. It's uh, at the refinery of Heide in the very northern part of Germany. The project has, uh, as I mentioned, received the national funding for phase one, which is a 30 megawatt electrolyzer, where we work together with our partners now to enable a final investment decision by the end of 2021. The 30 megawatt will allow the refinery to basically substitute all the fossil hydrogen it's using in its processes today with renewable hydrogen. But that is not the end. Uh, there is a clear vision here and ambition of all the partners to bring this project uh, to a gigawatt scale. And we talk about uh, something between 700 megawatt to 2100 megawatt as a next phase, allowing the production of green fuels it's important to know uh, that uh, uh, Refinery Heide is the exclusive supplier of jet fuel for Hamburg Airport, one of the largest regional airports in Europe. We are very happy uh, that we are part of, uh, of this project uh, because it also brings together partners uh, that can work very holistically uh, and uh, in, a, in a very holistic way uh, related to all the processes, inputs and outputs uh, of the project. To just give you an example, so uh, the, the 700 megawatt uh, plus project uh, will be fueled by offshore wind uh, from offshore wind farms in the German North Sea. Then uh, the oxygen that is being produced uh, as part of the electrolysis process uh, will be used by a close by cement factory uh, that is operated and owned by Holz Holzem, significantly reducing their nitrogen oxide emissions. The CO2 uh, produced uh, at the cement factory is then being rechanneled into the refinery for the production of green fuels. Excess heat uh, that is part of the process uh, will be used uh, by a close by business park. So it just shows sort of you know, uh, how holistically sort of this project uh, is being taken. And that's why it's one of the projects, uh, one of the flagship projects the German government has selected uh, for the Ipsi process. To sum up my presentation, Ørsted has the ambition to become a global leader in renewable hydrogen and green fuels. We have significant synergies with our large-scale renewable assets. Our approach is to establish mature and scale up uh, the tangible projects, built upon our extensive experience in scaling up and costing out new technologies, and working together with our partners. And then most important, what I want to leave you with is, we are not only very excited when it comes to renewable hydrogen and green fuels, we are not only well positioned, but we are already heavily engaged in really kickstarting this important new industry. <laughs>